I did find it fu like funny that like out of all of the samurai, like he was he was one of the ones who made it like at the end, and and he was the one that was they were quite keen to get rid of it to begin with. Mm. But he like he like held his like he killed a, like, he killed a lot of men for them, and all he required really was he didn't really require anything. Mm. He wanted to stick around just because he wanted to stick around and have some fun. Did that was that his motive, or was there anything else to it? <laughs> James, what did you think of his character? Like, you haven't said anything on him yet. Um, so, th to answer your question first, Liam, uh, his motive. I think it his, wasn't his his motive that he just didn't he couldn't face going back to to where he was he was going to because he'd kind of made made wrong of this of this this girl called Apache that, that he that he loved who was actually his boss's kind of wife or something like that and so he was kind of afraid to go back to where he'd come from and so wanted to hang around with those guys I'm pretty sure that was kind of the limits of his of his motive I thought it was vengeance um, that he wanted I mean with regards to what I thought of his character uh I, I mean I thought he was funny like I thought it was really odd like I, I, there was there was quite a few moments in the film just throughout I mean aside from him where the the tone of the scene just shifted suddenly, like in the very first scene where they're kind of detailing the main um, samurai on you know this this uh, this emperor's uncle's kind of uh, misdeeds, and they show the woman with all her like limbs cut off and stuff like that, yeah. and then they show her and it's really harrowing, and then he just suddenly looks up and starts laughing, and he's like, oh yes, it would be an honor to like go and do on this quest and stuff quest to go on the quest with you and he's, he's laughing his head off and I was like what the hell why is this guy laughing all of a sudden and there was quite a few instances where I was like I, I'm not sure whether you know it's it's a cultural thing or what but it just seems like the, the tone of these scenes is jumping around a hell of a lot like from real like sincere um kind of uh, almost like a quite quite a, a stern atmosphere to somewhere that like they're just making light of certain situations that doesn't quite feel right and he as a character was was kind of a, the prime example of that and I, I don't think that you know he he was someone that I quite enjoyed when he came along to the group I thought he was I thought he was quite a fun little energy in it and you know I, I found him quite funny that's that's probably all I'd say about him I just found him quite entertaining I don't think maybe any of the points around him as you were saying Liam but trying to uh, dissuade or to kind of uh, actually coerce the samurai into doing kind of things which were kind of against their against their code. Any of those points, are that I don't think they potentially landed as hard as maybe they they could have done because I was too busy laughing at all the shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, right. It's quite a lot online about it. Yeah, like he's looked it up now. He, he said it was confirmed during an interview with the director that the bandit that chap. I don't know if you actually yeah. know, but, um, representing a yokai or a, a forest spirit animal or something, and yeah. is therefore immortal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's quite yeah, a lot online about that. I don't know whether that's just, yeah. <laughs> it's just cool, isn't it, I guess. As far yeah, as I'm I think aware, they need to, I think they need to flesh that theory out a bit more. As far as I'm aware as well, he it's not a character that existed in the original. I can imagine that. Yeah. yeah. Um, six, 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 uh, well, one thing actually I thought as well is, uh, did you did you watch it? And think, I watched watching it through. I was like, I can totally see why this worked in 1963, as a as a as a screenplay. Very exciting, very uh, especially to Western audiences. Do you think it it it, it worked in a, as a 2010 more modern film? Would you see it in cinemas and be impressed by the the narrative, the plot, the structure itself? I felt, it felt like an epic. It definitely felt like an epic. It, like just the the cinematography, you know, when they're all traveling through the jungles mm. and they're getting up to their various adventures. It, it felt like it felt like a Last Samurai. It felt like a brave part. It felt like one of these big, um, you know, exploratory adventure films. But it did have something different about it, which was that kind of really serious, really gritty kind of like low key grim atmosphere. You know, which is occasionally interspersed with like, you know, really slip like uh, big violence, and um, you don't see that in those kind of twelve A adventure films. So it, it gave me something different to to what most epics do, um, while still kind of 
moving along and, and having the kind of expanse and the scope of one. So I rated it for that. I, I don't think it, it didn't feel like an epic at all to me. I, I don't. I, and I, I, just, I don't know what it did feel like for me. That, that's the thing. It just. It just was <clears throat> felt quite. Conf- quite confusing for me at times like i was getting loads of different vibes from loads of different films like as you said magnificent seven i definitely got those vibes i was getting like hobbit vibes at some times so when you're walking through and you're like all these different kind of matey boys all assembling and going off and trekking through the, the jungle and bits like that i was getting so many different vibes from this film and then i found myself laughing at times so i was like wait what the heck what is, what is this film trying to be so I, I, so I found it a little confused at times Huh? You, you, you get that in The Hobbit, or you get that in The Last Samurai, you know, sweeping adventure, you know, wandering through the forest and then in the spurs of humour. You'll get that in those films too, though, no? You don't get guys bumming fellas up the arse, like, no. stuff like that. I, I just don't, I don't think you get that. What a, <laughs> just, what a charming it, member. Some of it was just a little extreme and a little weird for me. Was it a charming member, he says. <laughs> what a charming member. Yeah, that was that was weird. That, that was, was weird. Out. It was like that mayor. I was like, why is why is the mayor doing this? <laughs> a splendid member you have, so charming. It's 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 hard though, right? Like I I, mm. I did feel like I I didn't really out of the thirteen characters I love the main assassins. I probably knew four of them. I mm. knew kind of the main guy. The main guy who brought them all together. His his nephew. I knew that the guy that was training with him at the start that was really sick fighter and then the forest spirit and then all the other guys were kind of just I, I, I really really couldn't identify who they were and I mean it's that's the difficulty like you talk about the hobbit they have three films to let you know who those characters are and they still flesh them out fairly poorly like he had, he had one kind of one two and a half hours to assemble 13 guys and try and define them as characters and I don't think they did it very well but I also think it's a really difficult task to do but I just don't think it really worked yeah I agree half with the fighting is when when they did start knocking a lot of them off I, was, I had no idea who was who and who yeah, had, apart from, from when, it, when each one died the other one would shout their name <laughs> um, but yeah I, 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 yeah there were probably about six of them that I hadn't really they died and I was like oh no they're all dying now but there was no yeah. like not him. Like, do you think? Do you think it could have been a bit more unpredictable? Not in a sense that obviously you, you know. So you know, there's they're setting up this, you know, Takeshi's Castle, Death Town, type type of thing, and you know, you know, there's going to be a big fight. You know that most of them are going to die, but they'll probably win. Uh, and then it, 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 it exactly exactly that happens. I, I just felt I felt a bit wanting for some sort of suspense in the second half of the film because there was just this this non-stop violence that it didn't it didn't really build to it to, to a crescendo as, as, as much perhaps and, and that yeah, the end bit it was it wasn't a, a big fight and it you could say it was slightly surprising but you could sort of see how it was going to end with, with perhaps both of them going out um it, it could have done a, a bit more in that in that regard for me I, I, I actually don't think it needed to to try and have like a a twist or anything like that in it i think the whole film was all about like you knew there was going to be some crazy fight and 13 guys were going to take on a shitload of people like that was always what was going to happen and the the the, the success of the film is whether it got you excited having set that expectation because that expectation is set right from like the first half an hour of you watching it you're like right there's going to be 13 guys they're going to go to a town and they're going to fight a shitload of troops and like I, I I wasn't disappointed because it delivered exactly that. I kind of was expecting and hoping that they did deliver it. Um, so I don't know. I don't know whether I don't feel like I'm. Uh, it gets marked down for doing that for me. Well, bear in mind, you're not, not, you're not. I agree. You're not really there for like a um, uh, a fresh narrative or like uh, you know a, a spin on a, on a traditional plot or anything like that. You're you're there to see something very conventionally structured. Uh, just executed really well. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're, you're there for the way it's done, not for like, you know, yeah. the structure or whatever else. Bear in mind, it is yeah, it's, it's a it's a remake of the 1960s. I mean, that's it's, yeah, te- yeah. it's textbook 1960s screenplay writing, um, 
And yeah, you're there for the re it's just a remake of it, and it depends how how closely it sticks to the original source material. But when you're doing, yeah, you can inject your various bits. But if it is a remake, I suppose you just the screen. It's not going to differ too much. So maybe that's just an, the aging process of screenwriting and how how it's just developed. How we as audiences have changed, um, and just how we view films and what we're. Um, we grow so accustomed to some things that they develop over time and then you go back to a screenplay that's 50 years old and you suddenly go, well, that looks a bit, it's a bit weak, isn't it? Because we're much more used to a different type of cinema yeah. these days. Um, so I, I think, of course, you, of course you can knock it for weaknesses in the narrative structure and the plot itself, but it, it's because it's a remake of, a, of an original screenplay. Um, which at the time you can imagine would be enthralling, um, but yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah. So I, I'm assuming there's loads and loads of you know, physical um, effects, you know, got lots and lots of stunt men and stuff like that mm. um, in the in the original. This is one thing I would say is actually from after finishing thirteen this thirteen assassins, it made me want to watch the 1963 one, mm. um, to, a to compare, but also I think it could be really good. I think it could be a really good film and. Uh, we've seen the remake, but I have a feeling I've seen the remake that I think the original, if it's good enough to remake, chances are it's pretty damn good. I don't know, I don't know what it's rated or anything like that. But much like Magnificent Seven and other ones that have been remade, I mean, I've really enjoyed the new, the modern remake of Magnificent Seven. But you know, the original is just epic, um, much like many others. So it's only, it, 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 it certainly made me want to watch the original, um, and made me quite hopeful that the original might actually be better than this one and that's not even to say that I didn't enjoy this one at all but again that's that, isn't that, that's that's kind of like um uh playing into you know the idea that you, if, if, if you really want to watch the the original which is a lot older and, and and not clearly not as up to date in terms of um you know modern cinematic you know techniques and whatnot doesn't that prove then that you know you, you're really only interested in how it's done, like how it was executed? Because you, you you know what you're in for, you know you know exactly what the plot will be. Again, I, I would struggle to watch um, too many of those films in a row just because you know eventually you would be, um, yeah. you know you would want something more, like Jem says, uh, narratively speaking. Mm. I just just to sort of um, count, counter it. It's something like, uh, say, the Last Samurai. You, know, you, you, you don't. You could say you, you sort of see that ending coming, but but not to the same extent. You know, you, you, you gen generally there's a, there's a format of um, you know, of someone of some of the good guy winning. Um, but obviously not not in the, the Last Samurai. Do you all enjoy the yeah. choreography of the fighting? It takes up a large chunk of the film, so it needs to be good. I thought the fighting. I, 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 yeah. They, they certainly made it interesting. I mean, there's um, loads of it, and you don't watch any of it and think that looks a bit shit. But, no, I thought it was great. Yeah. The sound, I thought the sound design was sick. Like the sound, the, the actual, you really feel the blows mm. when people get actually dashed and sliced and bashed and stuff. I thought the sound design was amazing. 